Hey guys, Mike here. So, oh boy, biggest two-day gain in the S&P since March of 2020. When you just think it can't get any funnier or any crazier in this market, again, you're first, right? I mean, it just never fails. And this is what I was saying. I'm not Nostradamus or anything else, but I was telling you guys, I do the research, I present it to you, you take it, you're adults, you do with you what you want to with it. But I told you when it gets this bearish, and you see the media flip and start talking about the world coming to an end, that's when you know the algorithm is going to kick in. That's why I showed you that gentleman who covered their shorts, who's super bearish. When you see people who are making a lot of money short in this market start to cover their shorts, because why? The risk reward is not there anymore, and they made a boatload of money off of it. It's not worth the risk. And so, of course, what has happened the last couple of days, who, know, who knows how long it's going to last, but you see a big surge up. Why is this happening? Okay, I'm going to get into news events right here. I'm going to get into exactly what's happened, where we're heading, all that stuff. But, you know, understand the shorts voluntarily cover like that gentleman and his firm did and a lot of other firms covered. That's what starts driving the stock up. And then all of a sudden you get these massive surges and then Pete, the other shorts start going, oh man, we got to start covering. And they're covering at a frenzy because remember, nothing fundamentally has changed in this market, right? Nothing. The Fed is still tightening. There's still going to be liquidity issues in the future. Growth is still going to slow. All that fun stuff, okay? That None of that has changed, right? But I will say this. What else is the market? And it always amazes me when you start getting these rallies, what happens, right? You get another um, central bank. Excuse me. I almost went blank there for a second. Central bank blinking, right? They talk a big game, and then they blink. And it was the Bank of Australia. They were supposed to do 50 basis points, so everybody was banking on, you know, we're going to really get this, you know, inflation under control. And then what do they do? They raise it 25 basis points. People went, oh, there you go. Another central bank. Now you got Bank of England. You got uh, the central bank over in Australia. That they're blinking. Here we go. It's only a matter of time for our Fed does the same thing, right? Which they see that as you know, short-term bullish, not long-term, so to speak but anything to accelerate a rally. That's just the way it is, right? They want to make money pushing it down and they want to make money pushing it back up so they can short it all over again, right? And so that's what's happening. It's just the sequence we go through every time. You know, that's what I was telling the members. And that's what these bear market rallies are. It's literally just short coverings. That's what starts it. And then, you know, once uh, the retail says, oh my God, oh my God, I'm missing out. And watch the news, they're going to start kind of going, this could be the bottom. Maybe this is the real bottom. And who knows, maybe it is. But that's when retail starts flooding in. And then that's when these institutions say, okay, great. We've made tons of money on these shorts. We made tons of money to run it back up. Now let's go ahead and start shorting the market, which means they'll start selling, actually, you know, borrowing the stock to sell. And then, of course, it heads back down. When that's going to happen, who knows? That's the thing. How long can rally like this ha uh, you know, take place? Don't know, and it's extremely volatile. Just look at the June 15th through the August rally. It was extremely volatile going up, but it kept going up, right? And just to catch up on a few things, I like to come, when I come across this kind of stuff, you know, talking about nothing's changed. Look, this is a thing I love. I've talked about this. We ain't really seen it yet, but it says, you know, farewell, cheap money, refinance costs for borrowers globally climb to record high. I mean, look, look at this over here to the right. And that's what I'm saying. We hadn't even seen this yet. When people try to refi and start having to have to take out new debt to survive, if we do go into recession, this is what they're going to be taking it out as, which is horrible, right? Then this one I like to keep you updated on. This is, and myself as well, this is the excess household savings. We talked about this a lot. Remember it was like, what was it, $2.2 I kept trying to figure out where they're getting that money, where that number from. Well, now all of a sudden, according to new bank data, it's down to around one, a little over $1.2 trillion, which is still a lot of money. But this shows that people are burning through that savings, which makes sense. I mean, it's common sense, for God's sakes, tells you if you're paying, you know, 25 to 50% more of the stuff, you're going to burn through your savings. That's just going to happen. And so, yes, this money is coming down, and it's coming down quickly. So that's something I'm going to keep an eye on. If you ever get data like that, please send it to me. I'd love to share it with people. And, of course, the job numbers coming out. This is what the Fed is watching like a hawk. And, you know, total industry job openings are starting to come down quite fast, right? And this is what the Fed wants to see. This is another reason the market might say, oh, look, this is going to cause the Fed to pivot as well, which, of course, we all know it, for the economy-wise, that's going to be bad if the Fed pivots because that means a lot of people have lost their jobs. The economy is slow to a grinding halt, but the market really don't care about that. They just look at the short term for right now. 
and they're trying to be ahead of the game three to six months, whatever it is. And please hit that like, subscribe button and share the video if you get a chance. I certainly appreciate it. And don't forget to take advantage of the Seeking Alpha special, $99 for a whole year. Instead of the $239, just use the link in the bottom of the description. I use it. I've had it for two years now, and I didn't pay $99. I paid the full freight for this. But, you know, you can find anything about stocks, track your portfolio, end up looking at stock ideas, come up with your own stock screeners, anything you can imagine you can have it, and it's basically $8.50 a month now. So a whole lot cheaper, link down in the description. And so that leads us into the chart, right? Where we're on the S&P, a few things happen today. There's some, you know, support levels that are getting broken. Actually, I'm sorry, I should say resistance levels getting broken that are now hopefully becoming support again, at least for the short term. And so, you know, the big question is, and you understand why this happened. Like, why did this happen? Why did this bounce happen? That's always the key, right? It's not just news or anything like that. The reason why this bounce happened, we ended September and there we are. This is the monthly charts, the 50 EMA bounced right off of it to start a new month, right? And then on the weekly, you got the 200 EMA sitting right there and boom bounced right off of it so you had a big 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 or two big support levels right there at the same time hitting it and what did i tell you about that kiss of death i don't know if it's going to play out but remember it's all bad news and then what happens usually with the kiss of death when you get that you end up getting a rally of some kind whether it happens immediately or a couple weeks later whatever it is you end up getting anywhere from eight to you know like 15 percent rally on the, the s p right and so that's what you're seeing happen right now. And, you know, some things to look at here, where are we heading, right? That's where the big thing, we're above the June lows, which that's what we're looking at. And if we go to the daily, I think a lot of people, just like the last one, who knows where we're gonna get to is a total guess. But you know, that 618 Fibonacci, that's a big one everybody's gonna be looking at. Another thing everybody's gonna be looking at is this trend line right here to see, cause that right there will be resistance, right? As we're trending down since the June sell, so actually since after the June rally, that's what we've been trending down on. And so that's a little ways away though. And so that's something other people can be looking at as well as another support level there, as you can see, or resistance level, I should say. And then, you know, look at the Russell, which I ain't talked about in forever. You know, it, during the June rally, it broke above that, uh, that downward trend line, which had been in place since November. Well, today it broke above it. It gapped above it, which leaves a big gap, which you know, if you know anything about me, I hate when something gaps up like this and there's a big gap there. It's going to be filled most likely, who knows when. And so we we'll have to wait to see on that one. But right now, short term, you're seeing a lot of bullishness, right? Now the question is, what I'm looking for is see if they're going to retest. Because last time, like when the Russell, when it broke above that trend line, it took two or three days to actually come down and, and retest because it has done such a major move up. And what have we had? Two, the two biggest back to back days since March of 2020, right? I mean, if we continue that in tomorrow, I'll be stunned to go three days in a row like that, but we could, you just don't know. I mean, when things are volatile, things are volatile, right? But what I'm looking for and what I would expect is to actually have a retest of these resistance levels that have been broken to try to turn them back into support. That's what I will be looking at on any of these trend lines. But the bigger question is, and, and I was watching, I think it's Clear Value Tax. I think it's a channel I like to watch, but I, I like watching, I've been watching this stuff for a long time, uh, even before it was a big channel. And he said something today in a short video, it, it made me just scratch my head and I started looking at this. And he said, there's manipulation going on right now. And let's think about this. What drives treasury yields down and the dollar down really fast at the same time? And it's got buying government bonds. I'm talking a lot of government bonds. So somebody's buying government bonds. The problem is I don't really know how to track that specific because I've never, I've never tried to track it. I've never looked at it. And so I'm going to look into it tonight. But if you had to be, you know, really big into bonds, I've said many times, I'm not, I've never been big into bonds, but this year is like the year of bonds because they're doing so bad. Right. And so we're all educating ourselves, right. Trying to be better investors. So if you have a way to track it as accurately, as far as like when you can see major purchases with these government bonds, that's got to be what's happening because when you look, and this is what's another thing few in the rally, obviously, is you got the dollar falling off a cliff, right? And I'm watching this trend line very closely because it's not far from and it's bounced off of it multiple times going back uh, to April uh, as it comes up, broke through it one time. And then you look at the two year treasury, it's selling off hard, 10 year treasury selling off hard. They're all selling off 
really, really hard. And of course, I saw this meme, so I had to put it in here for you. It's like the pair knocking on the, uh, knocking on the bulls' doors and roses and a shotgun behind his back, you know, saying, Ooh, is this rally for real, right? And I think to me, so if you have a way to track that, like mass purchases of bonds, government bonds, that is, let me know. Um, because that's what's happening. I don't know if it's our government doing it. Wouldn't surprise me a bit, by the way, if it was our government doing it. Or if it's, you know, like a, a BlackRock, and I forgot the name of the gentleman who's in charge of their bond portfolio. It's it's massive. Um, Gottlieb, maybe, is his name. But he had talked about this is the time to buy bonds, and they can buy a lot, right? So, but when you buy bonds, it drives the price up, drives the yields down, which drives the dollar down, blah, blah, blah. And so, you know, that seems to be what's happening, which is fueling this rally as well. But I guess the thing for me is now, I'm, and what I also tell you, I said, watch the news, right? Because the news, you guys, as soon as they start talking, this is why I get really scared. They start talking about, man, this, this could be the bottom. Maybe this, maybe this is the bottom, right? And, and they start that mess like they did back in June. We got about, I think we got in July when they started talking that mess. And so, and, and, you know, again, I don't try to predict nothing. I don't sit here. I mean, maybe that is the case. You don't ever say never in this market. But obviously, economically, things really hadn't changed besides we spent a lot of our savings. Growth is still slow. We did have two negative GDP quarters in a row. You know, people are still laying people off type deal. The job openings are shrinking. The Fed supposedly still wants to keep tightening. And so, but if they blink and do what these other um, banks have done, central banks, boy, can you imagine if we expect, you know, because I think what we expect in 75 Coming up November, you know, the, the bond market is calling their bluff. That, that's one thing that's happening right now. The bond market is calling their bluff on that. And so we're going to see if that's the case. And again, I guess it played out well with HYG, right? The high yield corporate bonds. Remember I showed you that where it was going up and the SPY was still coming down, the S&P. And so this has happened multiple times now this year where the bond, that from I don't know why I follow that one, but I just do. And it seems to be able to tell you, not with 100% accuracy, but it's been very good this year, saying get on board, fixing to do a, a rally is fixing to happen, right? And so, you know, that's another thing on top of the fear and greed index being below five. If it ever gets below five, you need to really start looking hard, okay? And so we'll see, you know, how long this lasts. I'm, I mean, that's the thing about having something in the market is at least you get to enjoy the green, right? And it's been some massive green. I, I get very i don't know pessimistic when i see this big a rally because you know it's, it's shorts covering like crazy i mean that, that's what this is right and but there's another thing that can fuel the rally is all that cash on the sidelines right people getting itchy people knowing i've showed you the seasonality of october november december you know and but the way i look at it is even if it's seasonality it's going to be a rough ride buddy you know you're not going to have two to three percent every day on these uh, indexes so we just got to see you know do we do a do a red day tomorrow do we pull back let me know in the comments what you think do we start trying to base out a little bit turn resistance into support that's what i'm looking for to happen could be wrong of course if we have another two to three percent day right we just start setting records who knows but anyway it's good to at least sit instead of seeing red all the time but you know that's where i'm at let me know what you're doing let me know what you think about that stuff in the comments again Please share if you're really into bonds and you know how to track the mass, mass purchases of them. Let me know. I really appreciate that and I can share it with the community, okay? So I hope you guys have a good one. Hit the like, subscribe button if you got anything out of this. Please don't forget that um, special going on Seeking Alpha, $99 a year. Uh, links down in the description. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for another fun day. Dude.